Then again, okay, conditioning reduce entropy. So any observations will reduce the entropy if that observation is used. <coughs> and then we have the property that the mutual information is non-negative. Entropy is non-negative if x is discrete. If x is not discrete and non-variable, then the entropy can be negative. And then we have the maximum entropy property that the entropy of x is always upper bounded by the logarithm 2 of the message size. So actually, if you see from this example, the maximum entropy of this is log 2 n. And that is achieved when all the messages are equally covalent. Okay, I apologize that I have to uh, possibly mention uh, something probably not very closely related to what is comms. Uh, uh, so this is a bit more like statistical, you know, like a class, but I think that's very useful when deriving some of the uh, performance metric for wireless comms. Believe it or not, that uh, many, not many, uh, some people, uh, they publish some papers with the wrong applications of this. So, so actually, the purpose of this class is just to clarify some of the points. That, you know, you may find some papers that are actually not very good. Okay, and we will see uh, an example of what's going to be. Okay, so we have defined channel encoding as a mapping process from message to code word. Channel encoding is reverse operation. Or the grid is that. And then we will try to relate R, the achievable rate or the coding rate, with the uh, Shannon channel capacity. So we can define, so for any uh, uh, coding scheme, so any uh, encoder and decoder combinations, we can define the average error probability as this. So this is basically like the error probability of code C when the message M being transmitted. And you sum over all possible messages and take the average of that error probability. So the performance of this uh, code can be measured by uh, three metrics. One is the error probability. The second one is the coding rate. And the last one is the code word length. So obviously what we want is the small p, large r, and n can be as flexible as possible, you know, depending on application. So sometimes we may have delay sensitive applications, so this means that n has to be very small. Sometimes we have a delay sensitive applications, that means that n can be very large. So Shannon capacity itself is actually concerns with R, so the highest rate for which the error probability tends to zero when the code word length tends to infinity. So this is the uh, classical definition of the channel capacity. So from this actually you can notice that channel capacity is derived under the assumptions of the, uh, of the large block chain. So if you use channel capacity to measure your applications, which may be delay sensitive, that may not be fully correct. Also, the assumption is the error probability tends to zero as this n grows uh, very large. Okay? <coughs> so when we are trying to use channel capacity to evaluate the performance of really sensitive applications, then that's uh, strictly speaking is not very correct. It's not very correct. <coughs> and then we define that the reporting rate. The, the, the quantity that we defined uh, earlier on is achievable if, obviously, if we can find a code with a proper encoding and decoding function such that that condition is satisfied. If we cannot find the code, then it's not achievable, right? The code is not existent. <clears throat> so, channel capacity actually is the supremum, or I mean, in simple terms, the maximums of all achievable rates. So for any transmissions below that capacity, we can find coding schemes that achieve those uh, conditions. Whereas for any rate that is strictly above the capacity, 
then there exists no such coexistence. So actually, it's a very thin line between achievable and not achievable, and that is defined by the um, by the quantity of C channel capacity. So what is the theorem? So the theorem is uh, capacity of memoryless channel. So in this case, we assume that the channel is memoryless, meaning that one use of the channel does not affect the subsequent use uses of the channel. Is given by the Supremum of remember what is this is mutual information, and we are optimizing that mutual information over the probability distributions of x. Okay. So what is x? X is the output of from the encoding point. So basically, the channel encoder play a role in shaping the probability distributions of x. Yes. This is quite the basic question, but I yeah. uh, want to understand. Sure. Can you give an example of um, case memory and memoryless channels? Memory and memoryless channels. Okay. <coughs> I tried to use uh, some practical examples. Uh, okay. So suppose that you have a very simple channel where the channel is only affected by PWG. So basically, whatever you are transmit, it will be added up with the noise. Yeah? And the noise is independent across time. So because the noise is independent over time, one use of the one use of the channel will not be the same with the subsequent uses of the channel, right? So in this case, we say that the channel is memorized. So it's kind of a line of sight communication. It's one of the examples. If the only imperfection is due to the identity point option. Uh, okay, the channel with memory is very interesting because many wireless communication actually is channel with memory. Why mm. Yeah, for example, I suppose that we, we are moving, right? We are moving. The channel changes, right? Yeah. But actually, the way the channel changes from time to time is unrelated. It's not that we. Now we are standing here, we have these uh, attenuations, and later on when we move here, the attenuation will totally change. No, right? Mm -hmm. It will have some kind of relationship with the previous sort of function. So we call that as a channel with memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how channel with memory and channel without memory differ? So in the case where we have a memoryless channels, the I think we will arrive with this later on, but I can mention it now. So we call uh, just now we have the channel, right? Okay, from people with comms background, we will regard the channel as the medium of transmission. But for information theories, we will think the channel as a probabilistic transformation. So the channel will simply transform x to y with a certain probability distribution. Remember that we are transmitting x, right? Mm -hmm. We have source, we, we generate both words, and we have x as an output of the channel encoder. That output will be transformed somehow by the channel, right? Will be transformed somehow. Okay, give you a, a bit more probably concrete example. So we have, this is a very uh, famous channel model. We call it as a binary symmetric channel. So whenever we transmit 0 or 1, we may also receive 0 or 1 with a certain probability of making an error. <coughs> So this channel actually transforms 0 to either 0, which means a correct reception, or transforms 0 into 1, which means incorrect reception. So there is a certain probability associated with this transformation. So when, when we refer to this probability transformation, it's actually representing this type of model. 
So it may be binary symmetric channel, it may be binary erasure channel, like the one that you use for for coding. I believe the one that you are using must be even more for coding. <laughs> <laughs> so this is usually used for, initially proposed for the binary erasure channel. So the way we view the channel is just a probabilistic transformation. So a given symbol entering the channel will be transformed into a list of possible output symbols. And that list of possible output symbols will have its own probability distributions. And that probability distribution is given by P y given x. So in the memoryless channels, P y given x can be treated individually from time to time because they are they are not you know closely connected in a way. So they are they are they are representing the independent use of the channel. For channel memory, we cannot do that because the channel introduced memory, right? So what we have to consider is the probability distributions across the code group. So we have to see the transmission as a complete sequence of the code group, not individual symbol. Whereas in memory channels, we can treat it uh, from the single uh, point of view, which makes the evaluations of the capacity, uh, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it's relatively uh, straightforward to, uh, to, to perform. Okay, 